Here you are, the final confrontation with the impermanence of the body and the mind. Your time is almost up. You had quite a life, filled with countless experiences, both pleasurable and unpleasant ones, because that is what it means to live a human life. You said your goodbyes to family and friends. It was hard, and perhaps even more so for the loved ones that you leave behind. But you are coming to terms with it. You have no choice. No one lives forever. You are dying. And all people you have ever known in your life are either already dead or will die too. And those that live now will remember you until their time has come. The body feels painful and uncomfortable now, and it is very, very weak. Even turning to the other side is something you can no longer manage without assistance. Your breathing is labored, but you are too tired to care. But still you think, while the body is struggling and some parts of the body are already starting to give up, the mind is still somewhat clear, even though it can be foggy because of the medications that you have been given. This is the circle of life and death. You heard this expression so often, but it never seemed as real as it does now. You tried to keep the precepts. You practiced purifying your mind. Yes, it was not always above reproach. You broke precepts more than once and felt remorse whenever you did. But you decided to do better and over time it became easier for you. You meditated but not as often as you should have. But you can still meditate now. You can die meditating, and you should. It is the best thing that is left to do. You do not need to be afraid. You have no control over the body no control over the mind, no control over the next rebirth. You never had any control over anything, but you can intend to die with a wholesome mind, not with fear, hate or regrets. You do not want to die with greed for your possessions that you worked so hard for to acquire. And you are tired of getting caught by a past that has long since gone. You can die with a peaceful mind. And you can still recite the precepts with the intention of keeping them. I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from killing or harming living beings on purpose. Never has there been a moment in your life where it was more clear to you how precious it is for all beings to live. It is an opportunity for them to create good karma 
and you should never deprive them of that possibility. Let them be a little bit safer through your sincere intention not to harm them. I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from taking what has not been given. You are dying and now is the final opportunity to be generous instead. You cannot take anything with you. What better time to wholeheartedly give all those belongings away and make other people happy. They will have something to remember you by or your gift will make their lives a little bit easier in some way. I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from sexual and sensual misconduct. Though the dying body is not interested in these things anymore, the mind might still be. Let it go. Let it all go. In the end, what did these sensual desires ever do for you? What have they given you that is lasting? I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from telling lies, using malicious, divisive or harsh speech or idle chatter. It is not too late. You can still decide to speak up, to be honest about things that you kept to yourself, to speak kind words that people will remember after you are gone, to forgive people that you were not able to forgive before. They acted out of their own painful experiences and tendencies and they created dark karma because of that. Forgive them. Whether they are sorry for what they did or when they do not even remember. Do not use your final words to sow discontent and fuel arguments, but instead give people some peace of mind. I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from taking drugs and alcohol. Yes, doctors might have given you medications to ease pain and discomfort, but that is okay. Instead of being drawn towards that painful body, the drugs make it easier for the mind to remember what is profoundly important, namely to be at peace and to leave all unhealthy and tainted mind states behind. You can now clearly see how this body is nearing its end. It is impermanent and it has never been more obvious. You know now that there is nothing beautiful about it. It is just an assembly of the four great elements. The earth element, most noticeable in the bones and teeth the water element, dimish diminishing now as you are unable to drink your fill and the bladder is losing control, the air element as each breath is now a struggle and the fire element that took care of digestion, maintaining homeostasis of the body temperature when now the body is either burning up with fever or getting cold and no blanket can keep it warm enough. The mind too is impermanent. There is no mind. There are just mental actions ever arising and passing away. They are like waves in the ocean, constantly rising and falling, completely impersonal, ever in flux, 
no one is creating the waves and no one is creating these mental phenomena. There is no observer. There are just observation processes. There is no meditator and there is no permanent self. And it is all right. You are tired and little by little you are letting go of many things. You start to understand that there is no need for a self. There never was. These states of mind happen by themselves, fueled by laws of nature, by previous causes and conditions that are already gone. What is now left for you to do is to let go of this life and leave with a heart filled with loving kindness towards all beings. And that includes yourself. You have had your share of suffering as all beings have. You had this idea against all proof to the contrary that you would live forever, just like other beings have that distorted perception. But now you are facing death, as all beings have faced it, are facing it right now, and will face it in the future. We are all caught in this wheel of samsara, which never brought us anything good or everlasting. These countless rebirths never gave us even a glimmer of everlasting wisdom or joy, and it is almost impossible to escape it. But now we can get out of it, because the Buddha ever compassionate for our welfare, taught us how. By letting go of all unwholesome mental formations and by filling the heart with wholesome, selfless states of mind. Let your heart be filled with loving kindness for all beings, no exceptions. Because there is not one being who is not suffering, who is not deserving of loving-kindness and compassion. Even a second of sincere loving-kindness is a treasure beyond measure. It outshines the questionable things that you may have done when you didn't know any better. Even in your final moments, you can still attain Nibbana by letting go. It does not even matter in which jhana you die. They are all pure mental states. Let go of this life. Let go even of the Dhamma that you discovered and that started to guide you through this life. It has fulfilled its purpose, and you know now what to do. To truly let go, you recognize when the distraction arises. You release it by gently turning your attention away from the hindrance, towards relaxing the mind and body, making them soft again. If your smile has disappeared, we smile. Even when the body cannot smile anymore, the heart still can. And return to your object, your final task, which is keeping the mind at ease, accepting, comfortable, gentle, tender and even happy and content.
because while the body is suffering, you can still die with grace and with boundless loving kindness for all beings. Repeat when a distraction comes up or a thought of regret, of sorrow, of anger, a memory. Why would you want to hold on to those? Discard them, just like the burden that you call your body. You can leave this life behind with a smile. What a alternative is there? Who would want to die with a suffering mind? Leave all tainted states of mind behind. You choose to die happy or equanimous and unafraid. A mind filled with comfort and joy even while the body is struggling. And when the body takes its final breath and the mind disintegrates and your name is no longer useful, 